afternoon. Red Bulls, Sebastian Vettel is second. Lewis Hamilton is third. Paul Sags and Quinny with you on the weekend breakfast. Neil Ashton from the News of the World uh, is with us right now. Um, did somebody say on that they that Chelsea were going to go unbeaten all season? Uh, did I? Did they? Um, vaguely, I remember <laughs> someone sticking a chest out <laughs> and uh, making a verbal volley that Chelsea would go unbeaten in the Premier League, 38 games. Don't know who it was, though. <laughs> Uh, oh, it was uh, Ash! It was Ash! <laughs> Good morning to you. Good morning. As, it, as, it is, as it's Sunday, I think it's the appropriate day yeah. to make a confession. And, and I did say rather <laughs> boldly that, that I believe Chelsea had the team and that they're equipped to go 38 games unbeaten in the Premier League this season. And, and unfortunately, um, it's taken them six games and, and defeat at Manchester City yesterday. But they've still been on a pretty good run because this is the first defeat um, since April when they lost at White Hart Lane against Tottenham. So they've been on a pretty good run in the Premier League. And that's what is it about Manchester City and Chelsea. Three times they've done them now. And they, they didn't look half the team, Chelsea. I mean, they just... Manchester City seemed to nullify everything Chelsea had. Yeah, I was really surprised by Chelsea because they they knew what this game meant to them. They, they, this was one of this was one of the real hurdles coming up that they had they had this game against Manchester City away yesterday, Marseille in the Champions League in midweek, and then on to Sunday's game, big game against Arsenal. So it was it was a big big seven or eight eight days for Chelsea and, and the a, a, a seven or eight days that will shape their season and now they've got to recover because they lost in the Carling mm. Cup in midweek at home to Newcastle OK they had a slightly different team out but John Terry played the first 45 minutes of that game so it wasn't like it was a completely inexperienced Chelsea side mm. so now they've had two defeats in a row so a little bit of a, a, an early season stumble after looking so impressive and so strong so muscular but Carlos Tevez he just loves playing against John Terry in this Chelsea team he, he, he is a real pest a real thorn in their side and he was excellent yesterday I, I love his spirit. I love his character. He really leads this team. Now he's got the armband on. He's just enhanced his the way that he plays and also his profile. And does he ever see his family, Tevez? <laughs> because when he scored last year, he had a dummy for his newly born baby. Now he had a message for his birthday message for his mother yesterday. Well, can't no, he just, can he just pick thing. up the phone like everyone else and say happy birthday, mum? Yeah, well, they're Premier League, they're Premier League footballers, Mickey. Come on, yeah, you know, the game, don't understand. No, the game's I to, changed. I used yeah. to love Wrighty doing it. Wrighty used to celebrate <laughs> with all his messages and the goals. Would you be really. concerned if you were Chelsea that the, the lack of... Um, not ability is the right word, but creativity possibly to, to, to in the final 20 minutes really find any sort of way of making any proper chance. No, they, they made the changes. I think they were a little bit outnumbered in a way in midfield. The, the three that Chelsea played, John Obi, John Obi Mikel, Michael Essien and, and the Brazilian Ramirez, well, Essien and Mikel have got the muscular presence, the power to match Yaya Toure, Gareth, uh, mm. Gareth Barry in the centre of Manchester City's midfield James Milner out on the left for City yesterday mm. and Nigel de Jong but Ramirez just didn't look up to it he was mm. getting beaten up in the centre of the park he was getting knocked off the ball in fact he got knocked off the ball by Milner that led to, to Carlos Tevez's winner yesterday so the muscular presence but also I was so surprised that Florian Malouda who's been brilliant had a great start to the season didn't play in the Carling Cup was rested in midweek ready for this game and I, I expected an extra set yesterday from, um, for, in terms of his performance just didn't see it from Maluda Kalu was missing yesterday but Nicholas and Elka back in the side they just didn't have the variance in their side but also Didier Drogba huge disappointment yeah. first few minutes in that game surprised yesterday. a couple of things didn't go for him and all of a sudden the salt no, yeah it really surprised him because he can he, do another, that yeah, I think. but surprised in the first few minutes of such a big game not everything's going to go your way when you're mm. playing a team as powerful and, and with as much talent as Manchester City do you take him off though? No, no, not for 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 Sturridge. Absolutely, for Daniel no. Sturridge. Absolutely no chance. And Daniel Sturridge, he's got this kind of cockiness. He's, he was enjoying the banter with the Manchester City fans in the corner as as he was warming up, and they were they were you know singing songs about him. You're not worth the money, and you know, all that money for a substitute. They're absolutely right. He hasn't done a great deal in his Chelsea. No, but yet, uh, in to one justify replacing in one Didier way, Drogba. Ancelotti, you know, I'm not questioning Ancelotti's decision to take. A striker off who wasn't firing yesterday, and there was a smug smirk on his face, Drogba, as if to say, mm, "You're taking me off." What's well, all I think he'll, he'll, he'll sulk till he, he next gets in front of goal. Well, he's the manager; he can make his decisions. Yeah. No, but the, I, 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 right I, I, Quinny, I disagree with you. You, just, I don't, you don't take somebody who can change any game in an instant the way he's been playing this season off for somebody who came on and you're going to play him wide right the play and do nothing. Mark. He stomped the yeah, place he did. It was a difficult position for Ancelotti to be in because he had a, he had a strike on the pitch. That's what managers do, they make decisions. Yeah. 
But it, but what what can you say to Job when he's in a mood like that? It can't come on. You know, it, it's the, the options for Ancelotti were limited. He had Sturridge on the bench yesterday, and beyond, beyond that, he had Josh McEachern, who who came on central midfielder, talented player, played really well against Newcastle in 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 midweek when he came on again as a substitute, but probably not ready yet to change games. I mean, everyone's gone out and back Manchester United after that now to you know back in the the title race, and obviously they are. But Manchester City, they're now they must be live contenders now aren't they well Roberto Mancini insists and it, it, it would have been confusing for his players yesterday had they beaten Chelsea and then all of a sudden he says yeah we can win the title he insists he insists they can't he believes that they're not ready quite how he can say that after spending 150 million pounds in the summer on a team that is now costing the region of 310 313 million pounds to put together that that to me is money that, that should ensure that they are competing with Chelsea and Manchester United for the Premier League title this season. There isn't time to waste. OK, they'll probably be in the Champions League next season because with or without Mancini, whoever's the manager of Manchester City, I would expect them to finish fourth this season and qualify for, for the Champions League, and that's where they want to be. But they also want to be winning league titles as well. So mm. the way that they played... I, it wasn't full of fantasy, it wasn't full of flair, but then neither was Chelsea's performance yesterday. So something missing from, a little bit of creativity missing from both teams. The difference, though, was this uncanny ability of Carlos Tevez to nick and pinch goals. We were talking, we heard from Harry Redknapp, 